Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from across the world. Our headlines. Nationwide outrage over custodial torture and killing of two men in southern India. Left and green political candidates see major wins in French local elections. Multiple political assassinations in Colombia over the weekend shake the country. And Australian federal authorities investigate pro-China legislator for so-called foreign influence. We begin with India where widespread outrage is broken out over the reported custodial killing of two men in the southern state of Tamil Nadu. Jairaj and Penix, a father and son duo, died last week reportedly after being tortured by the police in Tutukudi district. The two men were arrested on June 19th for supposedly not abiding by the state-imposed counter-pandemic curfews. The family of the two alleged that they were beaten up before being presented before a local magistrate in the middle of the night. The magistrate sanctioned their custody without directly verifying their condition. A couple of days later, they were admitted to hospital with excessive bleeding and other ailments. The two men died in the hospital between June 22nd and 23rd. Local authorities have also been accused of tampering with the first information report on their death to cover up police brutalities. Human rights groups, left parties and progressive organizations have called for the accused to be charged with murder and custodial torture. Four of the accused officers have been suspended or transferred from their posting. Action is yet to be, yet to be taken against the judge, while no murder charges have been filed against anyone involved in the killings. The state government, led by an ally of the right-wing BJP, has denied custodial death and has justified the arrests as well. After sustained protests, the state government transferred the investigation to the National Investigation Authority, that is the Central Bureau of Investigation. Local milk vendors in Tutukudi refused services to police officers in protest. Shop owners in the region also shut down in protest against the killing. The region has been witnessing a spike in police violence on small shop owners and hawkers under the guise of anti-COVID-19 prevention measures. In our next story, the ruling centrist Republic on the Move or LREM of France was not successful in making much headway in the final round of France's local body elections held on Sunday. According to the latest trend, the Greens party or the EELV may win most of the major cities. As per the results declared so far, EELV has claimed victory in eight major cities including Lyon, Strasbourg and Bordeaux already. The elections were held in over 4,827 cities and towns across France. In the capital Paris, Incumbent Mayor, uh, incumbent Mayor Annie Hidalgo from the Socialist Party won her second term after defeating the candidate of Macron's LREM, who came third. Formed by President Emmanuel Macron in 2016, LREM was contesting local body elections for the first time. In Marseille, France's second largest city, Green and Left Coalition candidate Michel Rubirola was leading with more than 10% votes against her Conservative Party rival. According to exit polls, Macron's LREM may not win any major city. However, Prime Minister Eduardo Philippe's the Republicans, an ally of LREM, kept their mayoral seat in Le Havre. Alongside the rise of the left, the right has also been on the ascendance. The far-right National Rally, or RN, headed by Marine Le Pen, won the mayor's post in the southern city of Perpignan, defeating a conservative candidate. It is for the first time that the RN won a city with more than 100,000 inhabitants. In our next story, a series of assassinations of social leaders took shook Colombia this weekend. In less than 24 hours, four indigenous peasant and social leaders were killed in the departments of Choco, Met Cho Choco Meta and Guivare, North Santander and Sucre. On June 27th, peasant leader Salvador Hemi Duran was shot dead allegedly by National Army soldiers in the North Santander province. The Social Integration Committee of Catatumbo and the Association for the Promotion of Social Alternative Minga denounced Salvador's murder as a case of extrajudicial execution. They demanded an impartial investigation and justice for him. This was followed by 68-year-old Ovidio Baena being found dead in the Sucre province on Sunday morning. Ovidio was a member of the opposition left-wing coalition of Colombia Humana and a former oil workers union leader. The same day, 22-year-old Javier Uragama, an indigenous governor of Agua Clara, was found dead with signs of torture in the Choco department after disappearing on June 25th. Meanwhile, Johanny Efer Vanegas, a peasant leader and a former member of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or the FARC, was also assassinated yesterday. On June 28 at 6 p.m., a virtual candle march was held in solidarity with the communities of Catatumbo and in rejection of the possible return of false positives. In Colombia, false positives refer to the kidnapping and murder cases of civilians by the military, which are staged as the killing of guerrilla fighters in combat. Between 2006 and 2009, during the regime of Alvaro Uribe, the military was incentivized to indulge in such violence. The Australian Federal Police is investigating a sitting state legislator from New South Wales alleging so-called Chinese influence. The accused legislator, Shaked Mosulmane, was a senior leader of the NSW branch of the Australian Labour Party. Mosulmane alleged that Prime Minister Scott Morrison and his ruling coalition is engaging in political lynching. Mosulmane was accused last week of receiving funds from the Chinese government in order to influence a sitting legislator. He has since been expelled from the Labour Party and has had his home in Sydney raided by federal authorities. Mosulmane was known for his outspoken criticism of the Morrison government's support for the anti-China attacks, 
by the Donald Trump administration in the US. He has also been criticized for praising the Chinese government's successful detention and containment of the COVID-19 spread in China. His case is the latest in recent years where opposition politicians are being alleged of being influenced by China. In 2017, Sam Dastiari, another leader of the NSW Labour and Senator, was expelled over allegations of being influenced by the Chinese government. That's all we have in this episode of the International Daily Roundup. We'll be back tomorrow with major news developments from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar, avanzar.